The works in here uh, are from 2016. Prior to 2016, all my photographs for nearly 50 years were in black and white using a film camera. Beginning 2016, I started taking Polaroid photographs and I also uh, started to take color pictures uh, because Leica camera gave me a, a camera um, to uh, do a video with and when I started to do the video for the first time in my uh, career, this was a digital camera, I took some color pictures and to my utter surprise, the color ones in this case were better than the black and white ones. And so that gave me the motivation to continue taking pictures in color. Well, in the process of making uh, Polaroids, it's been a, quite an interesting experience because I had my, got my first Polaroid camera in 1962, and I was obsessed with this. It was a very different camera than it is today. You know, it came out, you had to put some liquid on top of it, and it was only black and white. So I have a lot of fond memories of taking Polaroid. And then uh, when I went to South Africa um, permanently in 1982, uh, um, a lot of the people that I photographed wanted their picture. And it wasn't so easy uh, in those days to get mass-produced color photographs. Uh, so I used to take the Polaroid of them and give it to them, and they were very happy with this. I always take the Polaroid after I took the color photograph. It's not first. Somebody asked me today, do you first do Polaroids to see how good the picture is? I said, no, it works just the opposite with me. In the old days, people took Polaroid pictures before they made a photograph to see if it was good or bad. That was a way of testing a, a picture, but you, you know, you have a digital camera, you don't need it for that anymore. But for me, it's like the end of the process. After I'm sure I got the picture, then I try to find ways of, of uh, conveying the imagery in Polaroid. But there are substantial differences in what you can do with a Polaroid camera versus a normal digital camera. You know, in, in Polaroid, I think the pictures have to be much closer to the subject uh, and a lot less complex uh, forms taking place inside the picture than with a normal camera. You have to be aware of this. Well, the thing is, is in, in particular pictures I took at the time, in 2016, See, normally I'd taken it with a black and white film camera, so I had this digital camera now, I took the picture in color. But then when I first took the picture in color, then I, with Photoshop, would make it into black and white. And then I said, hmm, the color one's a little bit better than the black and white. So, and that gave me the motivation to start taking pictures in, in color beginning in 2016 or so. It was in this particular case, there were some um, pictures that, that were actually better in black and white. But I never thought of myself as a color photographer. I said I never would be a color photographer. I didn't really like color so much. So I didn't ex expect this to happen at all. It was just totally spontaneous, totally. And sometimes when things are spontaneous, they happen for the best, sometimes not. But in this case, it was. So it gave me the motivation to continue uh, the process to start taking color pictures. So for the last four or five years, Nearly every picture I've taken has been in color and eventually, probably in two years, I don't know when, I'll make a color book and I'm not sure what I'll do after that, but it's added another repertoire to what I've done over the years. It's taken me to another zone and, well, um, you know, it's color, it's not black and white, so color is different than black and white. Before I get to the place that I take the picture, I never have any ideas and I never think in words. A lot of people in photography and art think in words, I want to make a funny picture, I want to make a uh, beautiful picture. I never think of any words. So this is a very important point. Where do you start? That's one of the hardest things. So uh, sometimes it's with a, you know, uh, a person walking by that has a bird on their hand. Sometimes there's something on the wall, a painting on the wall. Sometimes um, somebody's uh, pet escapes out of the cage. Sometimes it's something I found in Holland I put on the wall. There's never uh, one way that you start and you have to uh, begin somewhere and see where it takes you. So you put one thing on the wall or there's something sitting there, but that's just the beginning of the process. And I commonly say that a lot of my pictures are like a painting. If you look at a painting, 
It might have a thousand brush strokes. I don't know how many, it depends on the painting. But it might be like a thousand processes that go on step by step by step uh, before uh, the picture actually uh, materializes. And then there's a point where you say, this picture is working, it has the right form, the pictures are holding together well, and there's some deeper meanings in the picture. It's saying what I want it to say. I'm not saying it's funny, I'm not saying it's this or that, but there seems to be complex meanings, nonverbal meanings that pervade the picture, and it says what I feel comfortable with, and then I try to take the picture. Valenness is a particular visual way of uh, defining uh, the mind of Andrew Valen, and if the pictures have value, they describe something about yourself at the same time. So people uh, can realize my aesthetic by looking at the picture, and I think for any artist, this is quite a gratifying thing that you created a zone, a place in the, in the mind that, uh, that uh, people um, recognize from everything else. So what is Valenness? So this is a question. Uh, Balanes can be defined by a lot of different words. The word uh, absurdity comes across. The word uh, complexity comes across. Theater comes across. A vision comes across. A world that's defined by chaos comes across. And Balanes is visually defined by photographs, drawings, sculpture, installation, and painting. All those elements come together we're talking about photography through the photograph. So you have drawing, painting, installation making, sculpture, all put together. And then somehow or another, it's all transformed in the moment through the photograph. So it's a multimedia approach, but ultimately photography is, is, is the core that unites these media. And in photography, um, the, those pictures then might be referred to as Bellinesque.